esa mulata. Camina así. Ay, mamita, camina, anda. Camina así. Dale un poquito para acá. Camina así. Camínala. La vecinita del frente. Welcome to another episode of The Dave Perez Show. This is actually episode two of a series of uh, different episodes I'll be doing with different cast members from a movie that I've produced through Perez Productions. I'm actually directing and acting in. It's called The Mark. It'll be coming out uh, early January. And uh, this is, I guess, episode two with Crystal Kadar. So, welcome to the show. Hi, Dave. Thanks for having it, me. I said it right. Kadar. Yes, Kadar. Okay. Yeah, I always screw up names. Oh my God, I'd be <laughs> horrible as like a TV announcer reading like Islamic names because I'd just <laughs> say, here, this is what it is. Um, welcome to the show. Yes, thank you. Glad uh, to be here. You know, and, and I want to get into all the stuff that, that you, you've been doing and stuff, but now you're in this film, The Mark. Yes. And you are playing? Tasha. Tasha. And you're basically a nightclub server. And, uh, and, and it's in a rough neck type of area mm -hmm. owned by a mobster. And, mm -hmm. you know, you're kind of like the arm candy of girls there. But, uh, but it, was cool. it was cool for me going through the casting stage because I'm like, this person from Indiana <laughs> wants to come. Oh, she, I'm sorry, I gave it away. You live in Indiana. Yes, I do. Um, but she comes all this way. And that showed me that you had the love for what you do. Absolutely. Um, did you start in film or theater? 
I started in theater. Okay. You know, at the age of three. <laughs> wow. What did you do at the age of three? Uh, I did something called The Queen Who Couldn't Make Gingerbread. It was, oh. um, you know, one of those like little daycare camp theater things. Um, actually, before that, I did my first dance recital the weekend before I started that theater class. So I started wow. really in dance. Dance. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're multi. Well, I mean, I'm looking at, you know, the information that I have. And yeah, you're, I mean, you can, you, you act, you sing, uh, you write music, correct? I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, and you're a model. I mean, look at you, of course, <laughs> and a dancer as well. <laughs> Um, I know when we first started talking through the casting process, um, I said that I did an interview with Jim Peterick. Yes. And you said, well, I opened for him. I did. <laughs> How was that? I, where was that at, actually? It was awesome. Um, that was at a place called the Star Plaza Theater okay. in Maryville, Indiana. It's unfortunately no longer there. Uh -huh. But um, it was awesome. So I actually, Jim Peterick played and then Dennis DeYoung Mm -hmm. played that night also. So um, got to meet both of them. And Jim Peterick was just amazing, very sweet guy, and actually complimented me on one of my original songs when I came off the stage. And oh, wow. that was just like a moment of zen for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, now I got to ask, how did you get that gig? I mean. Uh, yes. So I worked at the Star Plaza uh, years ago, uh, right after college. I had an internship there. And so I got to know the, the people there, uh, okay. Charlie Blum, he was the CEO there. And uh, just, he knew that I played music and wanted to give me an opportunity to play on that stage. Wow, mm -hmm. and that's like really cool from not really doing, I mean, have, what did you do prior to that as far as music goes? Have you performed in other venues or? Yeah, I mean, well, I had done, you know, the open mic circuit, of course, and yeah. I'd done a lot of local shows and uh, produced an album. So, wow. you know, there was kind of a build up to it, but but that was, you know, really kind of a, a huge thing yeah. that happened for me, um, just, you know, out of wow. luck, really. So. Well, you know what, and, and I was watching um, a, some, uh, God, I can't remember who actor it was. It might have been Tom Hanks. Hmm. And he says there's specific things that come with acting. And one of them at the very end, he said there's four things. And the fourth one was luck. <laughs> I mean, you can have all the other three things. But, I mean, if you've got to be sometimes the right place at the right time. That's you don't true. give up. You just ask, you know. And what's the worst that's going to happen? That's right. You'll never get a yes yep. unless you ask the question. Exactly. Yes. And this industry, you know, it's a 99 no's for one yes. <laughs> Sometimes, um, mm -hmm. but but yeah, <laughs> <Pretty> accurate. <laughs> I mean, but that's really cool because um, I'm doing an on location shoot with the Buckinghams, uh, the Cornerstones of Rock at the Arcadia Theater. Yeah, in a week and a half. I'm playing at the Arcadia on Friday. No kidding. Actually, with uh, a band I play with, Echoes of Pompeii. They're oh, a Pink Floyd no cover band. Yeah. Wow. So I wish I, I play, would have known because I, I, I could have got an interview with you guys. Oh yeah. You know? No, seriously. Yeah, next I mean, time the band, for sure. You yeah. know. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, and the Ides of March are going to be there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's going to be the Buckingham Ides of March. And tonight, I don't want to get off track for you, <laughs> but I was supposed to have New Colony 6 tonight, also doing another episode. But uh, they're, two of the singers were sick and they couldn't oh, do no. it. But I'll see them at the Cornerstones of Rock. But, I mean, oh, my God, you just, you jumped right into it. Uh, well, what got <laughs> you in the film then? Um, so I always wanted to do film. Okay. And uh, I don't know, just never had the confidence for it. Maybe I didn't have the patience for it. Yeah. Um, so I've done a lot of theater and, um, you know, it was just a different challenge that I wanted to try. Because uh, okay. I know that, you know, of course, in theater you make everything really big. You know, you want to yep. act to the last person in the last row. Yep. Project. And, right, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, with film it's, it's a lot, you know, more intimate and mm -hmm. smaller and um, there's a, just a lot of different challenges that come with it. So I just wanted to, you know, get into the film realm. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, I started out film too, you know, and, and personally, I think the better, God, I'm going to be hated for this. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, the better film actors are theater background actors, mm. I've always felt. And I've heard that from more than half the directors I've ever been in films with. Interesting. Yeah. They go, you film uh, theater actors just know. They know their cues. They don't drop lines as much. Mm -hmm. They know if they do drop a line, they don't just sit there and say cut themselves, <laughs> you know. Um, but theater background, and that's why I see a lot of the British actors that are being in movies in America, 
have strong, strong oh, theater background. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they'll even testify to that. They go, I never went to school. My school was theater. Right. Some of the greatest actors out there have studied yeah. in theater. You know, mm -hmm. I've studied Meisner and Stanford and this and that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, no, I studied being on stage, you know, doing yeah. one show, then going to do another show at night and stuff, you know. Right, exactly. And, uh, like and that's stamina. cool. <laughs> well, and, and, and you know, and, and, and theater is a big commitment. Movies can be. Yeah. Uh, it depends, mm -hmm. you know, how depth you get into it. Um, but you do all that and you sing and dance. So now you're juggling like, I can't see you not, not doing something. <laughs> no. I mean, I sing Always too. Always busy. You know, yes, I, I sang with that. Jim Peterick mm -hmm. on my show. So I do sing. I just, um, I actually want to get a group together. I, I talked to this person who's doing singing gigs. Well, I want to do acting. And I go, well, I want to sing. Yeah. So I said, let's get one of those like lounge group you know, duets where it's you and I, and we just sing duets, individual songs. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and she's like, well, I've got like, I got two of those already and I'm in a band. <laughs> so I'm like, I couldn't yeah. live your life. And only so many days in the week and yeah. hours in the day. <laughs> and, and, and when you, you know, involve other things, if you have kids or if you have a husband or if you have a wife or, you know, a, a job that's, you know, overextends you, yes. you know, then it's mm -hmm. like, oh my God. Um, but I definitely, I, I see that you've done some cool short films. I see your theater work. Chore do you choreograph dances or anything? I do. I haven't done it for a while, but I have done some choreography. I, mm -hmm. I teach dance, so. Do you? What, what, um, what do you teach dance-wise? Uh, right now I teach tap, mostly. <gasps> teach me. Yeah, so uh, that kind of started in a local theater group where I was. A lot of the people there wanted to learn how to tap dance. Yeah. So I said, well, I'll teach, so. Wow, <laughs> I'd like to do because I have a thing that I want to do is I do a lot of the uh, '60s, and I do I do like Sinatra, Bobby Darin, stuff like that, mm -hmm. and you know even like Dean Martin and stuff or Sammy Davis back in the day would give a little soft shoot to their songs. Yep. I don't want to get the whole Fred Astaire stuff going on. <laughs> I just want a little soft shoe stuff sure. in between songs. So that's me personally. But now I know you teach that. Yeah. Um, and it was. I, I, I was kind of not I wouldn't be amazed but just surprised that you said that you also you wrote a book because mm -hmm. you were doing book signings yes so now you're a singer an actor a dancer you write music you do all this stuff and now you're writing a book mm -hmm. and the book is here but yes <laughs> it is the playful journey mm -hmm. playful journey far out uh, the 12-week guide to a more playful life mm -hmm. and I jokingly said I jokingly said oh so it's a book for married couples <laughs> And um, can be there. You go. Your headshot in the back. Just yeah. buy it for her headshot <laughs> in the back. Then that's it. You'll be a playful person. Um, tell us a little bit about what the book's about. Yes. So um, it is just that. It's a 12-week jumpstart to finding your inner playfulness, tapping into what that looked like when you were a child, and kind of those feelings, and bringing that out again. Okay and applying that to a healthier lifestyle. So in every facet of your life, not just your fitness, but you know, in the way you approach your food, in the way you approach your, your day, your interactions with other people. Gotcha. What does it go from everything you were doing to say, you know what, I haven't done enough in my life. I'm gonna write a book. <laughs> yes, so. What, what, well, yeah, what was that that just was that aha moment? About a year ago, I decided to leave the working world, essentially, and join the gig economy and create my own business. Uh, you know, when I was pursuing this acting career and the singing mm -hmm. and all of that, I, I realized that it was gonna be very difficult to do that with a full-time job. Yeah. So I said, well, what could I do, you know, to work for myself, essentially? And I've been a personal trainer for about six years, so I morphed that into my own business, The Playful Trainer. I am a personal trainer, life and health coach, and this journal was actually part of the curriculum that I had for my clients. Um, so it just kind of all came together within maybe the last eight months as something that I wanted to publish and put out wow. there to the masses. Yeah, I mean, you know, did, there's, there had to have been some inspiration. I mean, you did mention you want to get into out of the work field uh, because being an actor, you're right, you do need that time. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, a book? I, I mean, I, I guess I need to read it and understand it, but... Um, I, I get the gist of it because what we do, you know, you got to be that, you got to be a different person. And within acting, you know, there's all personalities. Right, exactly. You know, and some I get and some I don't. <laughs> and I'm sure they say the same about me. Um, you've done all this. If you weren't doing all this, what would be your dream job? 
So what I would absolutely love to do, and the goal, is to have my brand, The Playful Trainer, and go out and do um, large events, large seminars, and travel the world, bringing this message of playfulness to others, and even having a television show, you know, where, where I'd be able to use, you know, my on-camera gotcha. skills and all that, mm -hmm. and sort of seek out the people who are being playful and living this way, and highlighting those people, and then gotcha. also doing sort of like a health and life coaching part of the show where I would find other people and walk them through the process. Sort of like a, a, a more cuter uh, <laughs> uh, Richard Simmons type thing. <laughs> kind of, right? yeah. You know, yeah. And, uh, and life coach. And, you know, I, I, and that's, I mean, they don't really have that now. They used to a lot, but then all of a sudden it just kind of drifted away. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, unfortunately, reality series came around, which isn't really reality. But um, but I see you doing all these things. I mean, when you started film, was there any insp any people that you looked up to, inspired you, or even with film when you won in the film? What 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 would you say is like your inspirations or the people that you look at as actors in either you know genre that you would say, wow, I'd like I'd, I'd like to be kind of like that. Sure. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Actually, surprisingly, most of them are men that I've looked up to, um, like John Lithgow. He's okay. one of my favorites of yeah. all time. Kelsey Grammer. Mm -hmm. um, Kelsey's sort of, cool. I love what I love about them is like their intelligence, if that makes sense. So they have like this intelligence that they bring to their roles, yeah. and it's comedy, and it's also you know very dramatic. So yeah. I love their diversity and their dynamics to the characters that they play. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, female actors. What is what are some of your famous or friendlier people that you might like? Yeah. So, well, Angelina Jolie was okay. always. I had a big Tomb Raider poster on my bedroom wall when I was growing up. I just thought she was so, you know, so empowered. You know, she was kicking yeah. butt and yeah. uh, you know being super sexy and just very commanding. And my husband even laughs. He says that um, Angelina Jolie would probably intimidate him if he met her in real life, but she just has this, this she would me. you know, aura about her. Don't mess with her. Yeah, exactly. You know, be respectful, be nice, mm -hmm. and she's not, demand, you know, she's not demanding you to be, she just demands it for herself. Right, exactly. You know, and that's yeah. all that matters. Mm -hmm. You know, you could, don't even have to talk to me. I'm okay with that. I'm okay <laughs> with who I am. And I, I, I think, you know, whenever I come across an actor that has what I feel in my mind, wow, that's pretty cool. It's, you know, that's how they are as a person. You know, yeah. and and it's uh, you you can portray anything at that point because you're comfortable with who you are. You have to be to be an yes, actor. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I see all these other things. You know, did you did you go to any uh, any schooling, any types of schooling for any of these things, acting wise? Uh, not so much acting wise. I did attend a couple classes at Second City for you know improv comedy. Okay. Um, and I've done you know just workshops here and there, and I've done a lot of community theater. So. You know, I always think yeah. the best training is just to get out there and do it. Yep. Um, you know, studied a lot of theater in high school, but gotcha. for college, I, I actually went to college for public relations. So. <laughs> well, now when you make it successful, you're self-successful. You know how to relate to the public. You yeah, know how absolutely. to present yourself, and you, you know, you're your own PR person. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've said that all along. Even in another episode I did with um, Roxy, who's playing Lexi. Yeah. Um, I, I threw that at her, and I'm like, you know, I, my school was theater. You know, mm -hmm. get out there and audition. And I mm -hmm. went to talk to different classes, schooling classes for acting. They've invited me to be a, a speaker at a few of them. And I just, well, what would you do? Well, you know, what's the best advice? Audition. Mm -hmm. Audition, audition. Even if you've got three things lined up and you haven't got time to do that other two films you're auditioning for, audition anyway. Right. At least you can say thank you, but I can't. But at least you're in front of casting mm -hmm. people. You get comfortable. Um you know, theater casting is a little bit different than film casting. You know, not by much, mm -hmm. but, you know, in general it is. And filmmaking is absolutely different than theater. You know how that is. Yep. Um, where do you see yourself, say, five years from now, other than, like, being in part three of The Mark? <laughs> yes, I hope so. <laughs> um, I would say I see myself sort of on the Rachel Hollis, uh, if you know her, Girl Wash Your Face sort of, scale, um, you know, where I'm hosting events, I gotcha. am, you know, touring with the book and also um, starring and producing my own television show. Wow. <laughs> well, 
Well, you, and you know, you've taken the steps. I mean, now you're at the Arcadia Theater, as we were talking a little bit prior, um, on the 29th. This Friday, the 22nd? 23rd? Oh, okay. Well, I'm doing next okay. Saturday. Oh, okay. Cornerstones of Rock is oh, the following yes. weekend. But yeah, so can you tell me about that band? We yes. didn't talk about that band yet, did we? No, Not we didn't. Yet. We're going Very to now. Little. Yeah, so um, Echoes of Pompeii, they are a Pink Floyd tribute band. I love Pink Floyd. Yes, yes, and I grew up listening to Pink Floyd. My dad was a huge Floyd fan, so yep. that was, you know, we'd have the cassette tapes going on mm -hmm. our road trips and all that. So I was super excited when they asked me to join the band as a singer. Wow. So I originally joined them as a backup singer and a couple weeks into my journey with them, I sort of stepped in the role as, as one of the keyboard players for somebody who um, needed to take a leave of absence. So that's been really fun uh, journey, you know, learning all those keyboard parts and you know, sort of yeah. stepping into that role. Now, how do you even get across to even, uh, see, because I know Pink Floyd and you know, they don't have chicks in their band, but they do have backup singers mm -hmm. and such. Um, how, how do you even get a chance to even audition for that? Or did it just come to you? Do you go to WIT? Um, that, they came to me. Yeah, and how they, they uh, I mean, they've known you from somewhere. Um, so just in, in Northwest Indiana, where this band is from, okay. uh, we have kind of a really interesting group of musicians, like gotcha. a network of people, essentially. And they found me through that network of musicians, you know, found me on Facebook. Wow. Asked me if I wanted to come audition. Have a good following as far as the band goes? They do. They really, That's really cool. do. Do uh, And so how did you get the gig at Arcadia? You guys just called up and said, hey, listen, we're a band. Uh, you got to give them your demo tape, I'm sure. Yeah. And I mean, I, I believe they play there pretty often, at least once a year. Oh, wow. Um, they do a lot of the festivals in the summertime, okay. you know, in this area in Illinois. Yeah. Um, we just played a theater sold out show in our area last weekend. So, you know, they, they do get a lot of exposure and um, have cool. a pretty, pretty big following. So it's That's exciting. a hard life, too, though. You know, I mean, when you're, you know, I know groups that are in Chicago that are like that, like are on, you know, Seventh Heaven and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the Beatles band, you know, American oh, English yep. and such, you know, and those guys. But there's like two Georges. There's, you know, there's one Paul who plays with American English mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. They have a couple of different Ringos, but there's generally <laughs> one Ringo. But, you know, because there's like three different Beatles bands and they all switch off. Mm -hmm. um, but it's rigoring because especially in the summertime, you know, they got a weekend car, uh, a Wednesday car festival, mm -hmm. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You know, they leave this fest to that fest. <laughs> they sing in the afternoon at one fest. At nighttime, they go to another fest. And it's, you know, you got to make the money when you can. Absolutely. Yep. So, you But know, if you're enjoying what you're doing, it's not really work. Well, I mean, yeah. It is to an extent. If, but. if you're not like you, singing, acting, dancing, modeling, <laughs> writing music, writing books, I mean, you know, it all comes down to time. Yes. Oh, my God. So in your existence, you mm -hmm. have a 30-hour day while everybody else has 24 yeah. hours. Yeah. I think I can time travel. Yeah. I'm not I, quite sure, but I think that's maybe how I do all this. She's <laughs> She's got a flux capacitor. That's what she's got a flux capacitor. That's what you got. Um what what I, I once again I, you're doing the mark you have anything coming up other than this coming friday unfortunately this won't air by friday which kind of stinks but oh no worries <laughs> um you can give you, you'll get all the credits you give me all the all the and the credits give me the band's information i could put that at the end too yeah, that'd on be credits great. yeah and they we can uh, play up in this area all the time so no yeah we'd love to wow you guys got to get to like um uh, like the Rosemont places. We are, you know? uh, there is a Rosemont show, Rosemont Theater. We're yeah. playing, I believe, in May. Get out of here. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You can, I, I can sing backup. I mean, I can, I, <laughs> I can do, I, I'm a baritone. I don't know what range. That's another thing I got to ask. We got a little bit of time, uh, another few minutes. I, how do, how would I go about finding my range? I've been singing since grade school mm -hmm. in choirs. And in high school, you know, I was a baritone, and I knew my range because we had a music teacher. We knew our ranges. But then high school, I just, you know, did other, or, junior, or college, other things. How do you, you need a music teacher of some sort to get to know your range. Yes. I love musical theater. Yes. Um, and, and really, you can kind of just, once you've warmed up your voice, mm -hmm. you can have, you know, like a music teacher, director, somebody, even somebody at a church, music director at your church, um, you know, just sit down with you and see what's the lowest note you can hit, what's the highest note you can hit, and they can, right, they can kind of guide you a little bit on your range. Because it's always like E, B, three with a little line and stuff, <laughs> and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. 
And then I've had people from theater that knows me as an actor and a theater actor. We're doing this musical, you know, Guys and Dolls. You sing Sinatra Awesome. Oh, yeah. You know, come out and audition. I'm like, okay, well, what? You get, you know, bring your sheet music, your vocal. I'm like, I don't have sheet music. I go off of karaoke tracks. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, I don't know my range. But yeah. I can sing Sinatra like crazy, mm -hmm. you know. And they're like, but you sing Sinatra so well, you don't know. And I'm like, no, I don't. But I'd love to do Guys and Dolls, uh, Nathan Detroit. And, uh, but one day I will, one day I won't. We'll see. <laughs> um, but I absolutely do look forward to all the things that we have coming up for us. Yes, I know. I'm and other than that, you being you. busy. Yes. I mean, um, is, where, where can they find your book if they wanted to get it? Yes, uh, it is on Amazon. Is it? You just search The Playful Journal. Okay. Um, you'll find it. It'll come right up for you. And, um, Any book signings coming up at all? Or? Um, I do have a seminar coming up uh, mm -hmm. December 8th that is just right over the border in a place called Munster, Indiana. Um, okay. We're right over the border from Illinois there. Gotcha. And uh, December 8th, it's a Sunday, 3 to 5 p.m. If you sign up for the seminar, you do get the book that comes along with it. We're going to be talking about how to keep the holidays healthier, more playful, less stressful, how to manage all the extra food that comes at you and all those things <sighs> during the holidays. Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> Well, you know what? Starts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, we're going to have to wrap this up, unfortunately, because uh, the clock on the wall says I got to go. Plus, I'm going to add some footage of films that you've done. Sure. So, an ending, everyone. Um, watch Dave Presho continually. Watch for the credits afterwards to see what Crystal is doing, as well as in the next 30 seconds, you're going to see some a little bit of footage from films that she's done. Uh, if you have any questions, you'll have all the information to contact her. And thank you for being here tonight. And I look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Have a good night. I'm Crystal Kadar, and I'm a singer-songwriter from Hammond, Indiana. I play piano and sing, and uh, most of my songs are composed on piano. I tend to play with uh, rotating musicians right now. Um, the guys in my band play guitar, bass, and drums, and they call themselves the Dead Beatniks. When people ask me what kind of genre of music I play, it's very hard to describe it. I like to say it kind of sounds like if Fiona Apple and Elton John got together and did an album, it would sound something like me. Because um, it's got a lot of soul behind it, but it's also got sort of a pop influence to it. So um, I think with the way mainstream music is going now, the alternative music is actually starting to become what's popular. So it's hard to say if I'm alternative or if I'm pop. You, know, you be the judge. Um, when I write a song, it's usually a story, so there's some sort of personal experience that I bring to it, or a personal experience that I know somebody had, or, you know, it could be inspired by a news article that I read, um, so that's where I get a lot of inspiration for my songs. Uh, I am on Facebook, Crystal Kadar. Uh, I'm also on Reverb Nation. It's a good place to get a lot of my music. So ReverbNation.com slash Crystal Kadar. And I also have a website, CrystalKadar.com. So that's Kadar, like Radar, but it's okay. It's easy to remember. So I hope to see you guys June 22nd at JJ Kelly's for the Battle of the Bands. See ya, Kara. Camina, Sasa Mulata. Camina, Sai, Mamita, Camina.